Hey, hey, everybody, and welcome back to the board meeting. Today, we are going to be talking about games, classic modern games, and games that I think you should try if you like those particular games. So if you like this particular game, I think you should try this one. And I'm not saying that the newer game is better or anything like that. I just think that they're they're similar in certain aspects. And I think if you like this one, I think you probably will like this particular game. And I've got 12 different games that I'm going to go through. Well, actually 24 because I'm going to pair each one with another game. When I'm talking about classic modern games, I'm talking about games. For this list, I think... I don't think there's any that are older than 25 years old, and I don't think there's any ones that are newer than, like, 12 or 13 years old. So, you know, there is somewhere in that range that I put for modern board games. So let's just jump into the list, and the first game we're going to be talking about is probably my first modern board game that I played. This is Catan. Settlers of Catan, it used to be called. Now it's just Catan. This was a super popular game that a lot of people got into the hobby with. And for myself, I played this game a ton in middle school and high school, like hundreds of times. And this game, when I got introduced to it from my friends, it blew my mind. And I always wanted to play this game. It was awesome. And in this game, you're going to control certain parts of the board or have somewhat control of certain parts of the board. And people are going to roll dice, and if they roll the dice that pertains to your spots, you're going to get you resources that you're going to be able to spend to buy different things throughout the game. The game that I'm going to be talking about, if you like Catan, I think you should try Space Space. Because it's very similar in the structure that you are always invested on other people's turns. Because you're getting stuff a lot on other people's turns. Maybe not so much at the very beginning of the game, but in the middle and the end game, you're usually getting more stuff on other people's turns than you are on your actually own turn. In this game, you're going to be collecting, buying new rocket ships in this row that you have, and replacing your old rocket ships. Your old rocket ships go on the top and upside down, and then on other people's turns, whenever they roll that particular numbers for, for those, you're going to get whatever those resources are, whether they be money or income or points. And uh, it's... It's a great game that has no downtime because you're always invested on other people's turns. So yes, that the this first one is, if you like Catan, try Space Space. Next one we're talking about is Ticket to Ride. Ticket to Ride is a very, very popular game. To this day, it's still played a lot. It's still, still sold a lot. And that's one of my qual qualifications when I talk about modern board games. I think they still have to be relevant. They still have to be played a lot. They still have to be selling pretty decently out in retail stores. And Ticket Ride, of course, definitely is that. And in this game, you're just going to be building routes on this board with, you know, your train cars. The game that I would say, if you like Ticket Ride, try Caesar's Empire. It is same sort of concept, where you are building out these routes with these roads that you're going to be placing out. But in this one, whenever you place a, out a road, you're going to score point one point for every road that you have leading back to Rome. Even if you didn't actually play the road this turn, you, people are going to get points when it's not their turn. If someone adds to one of your roads and you have parts of, you know, you have roads on that leading back to Rome, you're going to get one point for every road that you have in that leading back to Rome. And the turns are very fast, very snappy. It's very similar to Ticket to Ride in that aspect where it's kind of boom, 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 boom. You're taking your turns pretty fast. But the, the thing is with Ticket to Ride, that game is taking an hour, hour and a half sometimes, where Caesar and Empire is almost a filler game. It's like a 20 minute game, 20 to 30 minute game if you're really dragging it out. But you know, they're similar in structure, very fast games. In, in turns, but Caesar's Empire is just a faster game overall. So yeah, if you like Ticket Ride, try Caesar's Empire. Next set we're talking about is if you like Pandemic. Pandemic is one of my all-time favorite games. People know that because I talk about it constantly on this channel. It is the godfather of cooperative games. Not the first cooperative game, but like the one that really brought cooperative games into mainstream. And a lot of games take inspiration from Pandemic, the structure of Pandemic, where you're doing something and trying to clear some bad things that are happening on the board. 
and then bad things happen and kind of almost undo what you did on your turn. And then you have to go deal with that again. And then bad things happen. And, you know, in this one, you're just curing the viruses that are around the board. And if ever there's more than three viruses on a spot, it has an epidemic and breaks out and bad things happen. The game we're talking about to compare it to is if you like pandemic, try the loop. The loop is also a game, a cooperative game. This one has a little bit of a deck building aspect to it. You're going to be moving around this board trying to defeat these clones that Dr. Fow is putting out. And after you take your turn defeating these clones out and trying to complete certain objectives, he is going to throw out these, these what are they called, time time vortexes or something like that, where you're throwing these cubes into this tube. And this tube has three different areas that these cubes can go, and they're just randomly. If ever you have more than three of these cubes on a certain area, that, that area basically is destroyed, and you, you lose stuff there, and bad things happen. Very similar in structure to Pandemic. And I like both of these games a lot. They're actually, both of them are probably in my top 25 games. Love them both. So if you like Pandemic, try out The Loop. Next, we have Splendor. Splendor is a game that's very divisive. A lot of gamer, gamers think it's completely overrated. I think it's kind of just an okay game. But in this game, you're going to be collecting out these gems. You're collecting gems to buy these cards. But when you buy one of these cards, then it becomes a permanent gem. And it's sort of this engine building game where the more cards you buy, then you have more permanent gems. Then you can buy these more expensive gems, cards that are going to be worth points. So it's sort of building up for the future in this game. So if you like Splendor, try Splendor Duel, the two-player version of Splendor. You know, there's been a lot of games that people have come along and said, this is a Splendor Killer, this is a Splendor Killer, this is a Splendor Killer. I don't think the Splendor Killer ever actually came because it's still a popular game. But for me, Splendor Duel is the Splendor Killer. This is the two-player game where it's a lot more thinky, it's a lot more engaging to me, where Splendor is very nonchalant, like get get some gems, use some gems, whatever. In this one, I'm you are deciding which gems you're taking, and you have to take gems in a line, and so you're trying to block off your opponent. I'm thinking a lot more in Splendor Duel. I think it's, I, I rate Splendor Duel a 9, where I rate Splendor a 6.5. I don't think it's a bad game, but it's not great for me. So yes, if you like Splendor, Try out Splendor Duel. Next, and I think you should try out Splendor Duel even if you don't like Splendor. Just so you know. Um, next is Carcassonne. If you like Carcassonne. Now, if Carcassonne is a game where you are building out the map as you are playing the game. And that blew my mind the first time I played that game. Like, oh, I'm just building out this map. That was really cool. The game that I'm going to say try out is uh, Cascadia. Now you are sort of building your own little map, your own little terrain area, but you're not you aren't building it together like you are in Carcassonne, but you're building this big giant area with these tiles, laying out these tiles, trying to make a bunch of the same types of terrain, trying to place out your animals, animal tiles out on these or tokens on these boards to score them because your animals are going all going to score in unique ways, so you want your animals in a certain way out on your own board. It's great. It's a very popular game. It's very sort of almost a gateway style game, maybe a gateway plus sort of game. But I really, really like Cascadia a lot. Way more than I probably ever liked Carcassonne. Carcassonne blew my mind when I played it, but I didn't think it was ever amazing. But it was like, this is really cool building out this. This you're kind of building out your own terrain area. But I love both of them, or Cascadia especially. Uh, next, we're going to be talking about two small card games. Now, if you like Lost Cities, now Lost Cities is one of those, those classic games where you are going to be placing out these cards in your own area and you have very you have a strict hand limit. And if you don't want to, if you can't play or don't want to play certain cards, you're going to have to basically discard these cards into this open area where other people can then take them. And it causes that drama, that tension, like I wonder if my, my opponent needs this card. I don't want to give them the chance to get a card that's going to be very useful for them. But you're going to have to give people that opportunity occasionally because that's just how the game is. The game we're going to compare it to is, if you like uh, Lost Cities, try Enchanted Plumes. Enchanted Plumes you were, it's also a small little card game where you're building out these plumes, these, these plumes for these peacocks. And it has a very similar structure in that sometimes you're going to have to give up some of these cards 
make them available for other players. Even if you don't want to get rid of that card, you might just have to, and maybe hope that that card is still there when it comes back to your turn to grab that card back in order to play it. So it's got that the same kind of tension to me. But this one you can play up to six players, I believe, where Lost Cities is strictly just a two-player head-to-head game. So yes, if you like Lost Cities, try Enchanted Plumes. Our next game, our sixth game, is uh, Seven Wonders, one of my all-time favorite games. This is a civilization drafting game where you are drafting cards. You know, I take a card and pass, and everybody's doing this all simultaneously. You're building out this civilization sort of thing into your own area. It's very sort of an abstract civilization building game. One that I've really, really liked over the years. And I, I like it so much because you can play up to seven players and that seven players doesn't doesn't take any longer than a three-player game usually would. You know, you might have a slow player, but uh, generally you're not, it's not taking any longer for a high player count game. And so if you like Seven Wonders, I think you should try It's a Wonderful World. It's the same sort of concept where you are drafting cards, putting them down. It is also a a world civilization building game in theme, but this one has aspects of you have to build these certain cards and you're getting these cards by like by getting these cubes, these resources. And the more stuff that you build, the bigger your engine is, the more cubes you're going to get and the more cubes you get, the more stuff you can build. And it just it's really like an engine building game and it really ramps up really fast in like the the third second third fourth rounds of this game. So if you like Seven Wonders, try It's a Wonderful World. Next, we have some dice chuckers in this one. This is if you like King of Tokyo. King of Tokyo is is a game that I have played a ton over the years with my kid, with my nephew, with my family, with my game group. And it is just this dice chucking game where you are throwing dice and battling out other people and you're trying to kill other people or get to 20 points. You're either trying to get to be the last monster alive or get to those 20 points. Most of the time when I play, I just try to kill the opponents, to be honest. But uh, it's a gr- it's a great, fun time. Um, and it's got that Yahtzee-style system where you can roll up to three times and re-roll and stuff like that. The game that I think is, is really kind of similar in structure is Dice Throne. Now, Dice Throne is a... It's... You can play more than two players. I never have, but it's a head-to-head game for the most part where you are being an asymmetric person, uh, a person, and you have certain abilities. You are going to be using your dice a little bit different than the other person. And it's just dice-chucking, Yahtzee-style system, and it's really fun. And the asymmetric abilities is really what makes this game really fun to me, playing the different people, seeing what their special abilities is. So, yeah, if you like King of Tokyo... Try Dice Throne. Next, we have some abstract games. And the first, and we're talking about if you like Hive. Hive is this abstract game where you're playing out these insects, and these insects have certain abilities of how they can interact, and it's really fun. And the game we're talking, if you like Hive, try that time you killed me. And this is a weird abstract game where you are going to be time traveling, you know, forward and backward in time and jumping across boards, trying to trap your opponents with clever moves. Very, It's a very abstract sort of game, but it's great. It's very thinky. It's similar in a hive in that structure where you're trying to, to trap your opponents in certain situations. This one's got some little modular expansions that you can play with. They're, they're both great games. I like uh, That Time You Killed Me a lot. It's one of my favorite abstract games. So yes, if you like Hive, try That Time You Killed Me. Next, we have our final three games that we're going to be talking about. This one is Dominion. Dominion is is the granddaddy of deck building games. A lot of people still really like Dominion. They, they like a ton of expansions. It's just a straight out deck building game, trying to get points throughout the game. Really fun game. And the game that I would suggest, if you like Dominion, try Star Wars the deck building game. And this is just a head-to-head battling deck building game where you are going to be attacking the other person. It's got the Star Wars theme, so of course, I'm I'm a sucker for Star Wars. I love Star Wars. 
and you're just attacking the other people and you're attacking their base and you can you have to kill three different bases and those bases have special abilities. I think it's a really fun deck building game. It's a lot more engaging to me than Dominion. I know people are going to say I'm sacrilegious, sacrilegious because of that, but I like Star Wars the deck building game a lot. Dominion to me is a, a pretty decent, it's a good deck building game. But Star Wars deck building game gives a little bit more interaction that I really enjoy. So yes, if you like Dominion, try Star Wars the deck building game. Next, we have uh, so kind of some deck dice chuckers again. This is if you like Zombicide. Zombicide is the, that classic move through this map and these zombie hordes are just coming at you from every angle possible. You're going to get some cool weapons and you're going to throw some dice and hopefully kill all these zombies that are, are coming at you and completing whatever your objective is for that particular scenario. The game is, so if you like Zombicide, try Cthulhu Death May Die. I feel like Cthulhu Death May Die is like Zombicide, but there's a little bit more going on. It's not so much just dumb dice fun. This one, you will have to think about things, and you are, you have some decision spaces in this one, and you're, there's different scenarios. You're going around trying to kill cultists, kind, trying to complete objectives, but you're also chucking dice, and those dice, even when you chuck them, you have some decision spaces in there, and you might be going mad in this game. And if you go too mad, you're going to die. But you kind of want to go a little bit mad, a little bit insane, because the more insane you become, the more powerful, the more abilities your character unlocks. And I feel like this one just has got a little bit more decision space than Zombicide, so I like it quite a bit more than Zombicide. But, you know, if you like dice chucking games, both of these are good. But I really, really like Cthulhu Death May Die. And we're going to our last game today that we're going to be talking about. And this is Lords of Waterdeep. So Lords of Waterdeep is a very basic worker placement game that I still really enjoy. I still break it out pretty often. And I almost went with Stone Age for this one. But I'm not a big fan of Stone Age. But I really do like Lords of Waterdeep. Lords of Waterdeep is a great worker placement game. You go to a spot... You get resources, you turn in those resources to complete whatever your missions or objectives for that partic for, for the missions that you have in your hand that you're trying to finish. The game that I'm going to be talking about is if you like Lords of Waterdeep, try Architects of the West Kingdom. Architects of the West Kingdom actually used to be my number one game of all time for probably, I think, two years. I really, really enjoyed it. I really especially enjoyed the, the Age of Artisans expansion for Architects of West Kingdom, but this is just a very simple worker placement game with a couple different twists in it. But in this one, you're not blocking other people at, in about 90% of the spots that you're going to, but you are rather going to spots repeatedly. And the more times you go to a spot that you have people at, the more powerful that spot becomes, the more resources that you're going to get. So if you go to the woods, wood spot, and you, you're going to get one wood. If you go there again and your person's still there, you're going to get two wood. If you go there again, you're going to get three wood. But there are some decision spaces in this game where you can go grab other people's people and send them to jail and to stop them from getting those spots to be too powerful, to be too big for them. And so you have some fun decisions throughout this game. And I just think it's a little bit more engaging than Lords of Waterdeep. There's a lot more to, I think there's more to think about in this game. There's a way to stop people and do this and interrupt people's plans. The way you're gathering resources, I think is really fun and interesting. Just a little bit of twist, but I feel, still think it's like a medium weight game, a lighter medium weight game. One that I've really, really enjoyed over the years. So yeah, if you like War Lords of Waterdeep, try Architects of the West Kingdom. And that is the last of this these sets of games that we're going to be talking about today. So let me know in the comments below. Let me know some of these classic, modern classic games and other games that you think are pretty comparable. If you like that game, you're going to like this game. Either way, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to like and subscribe to see more weekly content. From me, Shane, at the board meeting in the future. Hope you all have an amazing day. Take care.